You're experiencing the Authentic Chaos Podcast, an exploration to our inner selves and journeys of self-discovery. I'm your host, Bahagani Arnosian, and today it's just you and me. We're having a little bit of a chat. Chatting, communicating, it's such an important part of our of our lives. Human society probably wouldn't be where it is today if we didn't have some form of communication. Arguably, what separates us from other animals is our ability to communicate so effectively. So effectively, in fact, that we can share complex ideas. We know that birds can communicate to find food and predators, but we can communicate complex ideas, right? So I've been th- I've been thinking about communication a lot over the past several years, and you could argue that one of the reasons why I started a podcast is because of my passion for communication. And it started off initially as a desire to understand or to be understood. For a long time, I had a really hard time um, figuring out how to, to get people to understand me, understand my positions, understand my feelings, and that required a really big journey. Maybe you've gone through something like this too in the past. Like, think of a time where Maybe you've been having a conversation with someone and they're not getting you, right? They're not getting you somehow for some reason. And doesn't it feel frustrating? It feels so frustrating to not be understood despite our best efforts. And I get why some people just choose to stop talking after that, stop communicating because they feel like they can't be understood. What's the point? That, that happened to me for many years. It's like, what, what's the point of communicating if I'm not going to be understood? I might as well not even bother. Um, I would still like talk and share ideas. But as I started to, under, uh, like, started to think about, about why I was not being understood, I think it started to open a bigger question for me. And it's not just about Why isn't anyone understanding me? It's my first question started as how do I communicate better? And I think that's a question that many of us, many of us want to answer, right? How do we communicate better? Maybe the issue is that I'm not being understood. So maybe if I communicated better, then that would be, then that would fix all of my problems. So I read all of the classic books, you know, Four Agreements, um, Difficult Conversations. I went deep into understanding, like, how do people who are good at communicating, how do they do it? And when I was reading through these, I started to get these general themes or these themes that they weren't really talking about, but that was kind of like an undercurrent across all of these books and it wasn't just how do we communicate better, but the theme ultimately was why do we communicate at all? What is the point of communicating? I've asked this question to a few people recently, and this is actually the, uh, the conversations I've had as a result actually um, spurred my inspiration to even make this uh, podcast episode. But from my reading, from my reflection, from my own journey to be understood, I realized that we communicate not just to share ideas, but to understand, to share understanding. Because we communicate more than just ideas. We communicate feelings. We communicate our personality. Everything Within our minds, we can communicate. All that communication is, at its simplest form, is one sentient being trying to send information to another sentient being. And by information, I don't mean just like ideas and facts, but 
feelings and perspective to a whole understanding humans we as humans we deal with much more complicated information than just facts than just like uh signals like oh there's food here uh we've been able to build these complex societies because as a result of our ability to hold to have complex thoughts complex feelings and be able to communicate them to share them across different minds so in that vein if you want to communicate better the first thing to ask is and to understand is why do we even communicate what is the point of coming to a mutual understanding of anything well this is something that kind of came felt a little bit clear to me because like i had mentioned i went through a long period of time of being misunderstood and in many cases i am still misunderstood but i've gotten better at explaining myself in ways that other people can understand which brings me to one of the other lessons I learned from all of these self-help books about how to persuade people, how to communicate better. This was one of the other undertones of communicating isn't about you understanding. It's about the other person understanding. So in order to get them to understand yourself better, you first have to define things in ways that they understand. For instance, let's say you want to share your um, your belief system to, with someone. Well, someone who may not share that belief system may not understand a lot of it. So it helps to start to describe things or, or come up, uh, provide enough context such that there is, you start from a point of shared language, shared understanding. This happens to scientists a lot, right? Uh, Like scientists have to deal with such complex topics, such niche topics, but but they have to be able to spread this information out to the public. This is something that I faced a lot in grad school where you take these very complex topics, this topic that you've been working on, thinking about for like hundreds of, hundreds of hours over the past couple months, and you need to distill it in a way that other people can understand it. The people that have not been thinking about it for hundreds and hundreds of hours. So you start from the language that they understand. You start from the facts that they understand. You start from the position that they understand and build from that. Think about how you learn a fact, for instance. Maybe do you learn a fact by it being beamed directly into your head, like just straight up, like no context? Or... Maybe it's easier for you to learn something when you make some connections. I know for me, that's how I learned a lot, and that's one of the things that excited me about school, just learning so many things that just built on top of each other, like how the maths that I learned built on top of each other, from like the algebras to the ca- to calculus to like more advanced forms, or in sciences, working from like physics creating this like fundamental layer to then from physics chemistry emerges and from chemistry biology emerges and from this i was able to take the these points of understanding that i could start with and then i could link them together and by me making that link together it became easier for me to be able to recall that information because it wasn't just information that i memorized it was conclusions that I came to. It was an understanding that I built, an understanding within myself that became ingrained within me. And maybe you can empathize with that. Maybe that's similar to how you learn, just building on top of existing information. This is actually very similar to how... um, neural networks learn. I know that a artificial intelligence is really hot right now, and that's something that I've uh, I've like done a lot of work in in the past. And so that is, this is actually very similar to how they learn and you know how they learn kind of mimics how other animals and how like neural systems tend to learn uh, at least uh, at least pretty similarly, but 
none of them start from zero. The easiest way is to start from some initial condition, right? Your previous understanding of the world. And from that previous understanding, building on top of it. No one can take, uh, just like no one can take a baby and teach them all of the complexities of economics and politics without uh, a lot, a lot of background information. Um, similarly, one can't take an artificial uh, a neural network and completely wipe it and expect it to be able to figure things out effectively. It's going to fumble around. And similarly... Going back to the topic of communication, no one is going to understand what you're talking about if you just jump into a conversation midstream with no context for, for a topic that maybe you've thought about, but they haven't. So part of this is a problem of empathy. Not everyone is going to be in the same, have the same world beliefs and um, the same concept of the world as you. I know it sounds crazy. You're, you might be thinking like, well, isn't there just the one world? Well, there may be the one world that we all cohabitate, but how we understand the world is different because the world is so complex. There's a lot to understand. It's impossible for anyone to know the full truth. So we have to base it off of our assumptions. And it is harder to accept Tr like f new facts or new truths or whatever when it goes completely against your understanding of the world or your complete uh, uh, or your understanding of yourself even if you for instance learned that humans uh let's say you know i was trying to convince you that oh humans actually have always had tails and it's only recently that we stopped having tails you might think well, that's kind of ridiculous because I've never known a human with a tail. And you know what? That is a very valid point to make. That is a very valid a frustration and point of issue. And the issue isn't, the onus isn't on you, the listener, to understand the, fully understand the point. It's more on me, the communicator, to explain my idea. Maybe. Maybe when I mentioned that humans had tails before, I should have clarified and said, well, we have a tail bone, which was evidence that maybe there was some kind of evolution, and maybe there was some kind of uh, tail structure that we had before we were homo sapien, much before. So then, I'm like, then you're saying, well, that's not very recent. And I'm saying, well, maybe by recently, I meant recently in a geological sense or recently in the universal sense. Um, so maybe we had a different assumption of the time frames. And see, both of us may have a totally valid understanding of the world, as in I understand that humans had tails, and you understand humans did not have tails. And maybe there's a little bit of a con of a conflict in our understanding, but these two uh, two different contradictory points could be valid. It's until we come up with that mutual understanding that we can change. Maybe you would rightly say, oh, well, if this was a, a change from evolution, then maybe those weren't even humans. Those were proto-human species. And I'd say, okay, fine. Maybe I'll revise my belief system. Maybe I no longer believe that humans have tails. A bit of a hyperbolic example, but as you can see, the there's a lot more nuance to these discussions to this discourse of any kind of discourse just because some some belief system doesn't adhere to your worldview doesn't mean that it isn't valid but you'll never know until an understanding is reached and that's something that i i try to do as much as possible and i've gotten a lot of practice over the years and so now i want to move toward some ideas that maybe you could use to better communicate, to better explain yourself in a way that other people can understand. For me, I like to start with, I like to go back and provide context, especially for concepts that maybe I know that the, my, like the people I'm talking about don't really understand. So this is a 
This is a part of knowing your audience, right? Knowing What does knowing your audience mean? It means empathizing with the idea that these people you're talking to don't have the same context, same assumptions that you do. So you will need to explain it a little bit. Maybe it takes maybe it'll take a long time to explain all of the background and all of the context. In which case, it, that's a good way to, to think about like, well, because it'll take a long time, why is it taking a long time? Is it because this is such complex information or is it because I'm going to have to rely, you're going to have to change a lot of how you view the world for it to happen? Um, and that'll determine how difficult the conversation will have to be because if you are trying to convince someone that, say, humans have tails, that's going to require a lot of a lot of work to build that case. But if you're trying to convince someone that um, tomorrow is going to be a bright and sunny day, that's a lot less. Uh, it's a lot less hard to do, especially in the middle of summer as we are right now. Um, so the knowing your, your audience and knowing what the topic that you're going to be talking about is, is a key. And this is part of that understanding, right? Before you communicate something effectively you first need to understand it and understand it in a way that you can turn it from your thoughts and your feelings into words and that is a difficult thing to do on its own um for this i recommend just like writing things down maybe talking to yourself whatever it takes for you to better inter better hear yourself talk about this idea, put it from thoughts into words, and then seeing if that makes sense. I do this pretty regularly. Sometimes I'll go on walks and I'll think about things. Maybe I'll start, like, maybe I'll talk to myself or a little bit. And from that, I'll get ideas of some of the things that are in my head. They'll first start to materialize as words. And I'll say like, oh, wait, maybe that's not how I want to phrase it or think about it and then I'll think of other things and then through that I come up with a distilled more concise way of explaining the concepts uh, the context behind the the concepts that I want to provide so once you know your audience and once you've done the work to know your topic and knowing yourself and knowing your understanding then it's about having that dialogue and the dialogue is going to be super important because you don't want it to be a lecture. Many people don't learn from the whole like teacher-student lecture way where you're just providing information, providing a series of facts. I find that it's more fun and more um, and easier to transmit information when you like when you have more of a conversation, when you allow for questions. I love asking questions. When my friends are telling me concepts that are very obvious to them but are not obvious to me, I will ask questions. One of my favorite questions to ask is usually about certain words that people use, right? Like um, words that I love asking about words that maybe we are commonly used but mean different things for different people. Like, for instance, I was having a chat with a friend where he asked me, like, well, um, what is a game? And then I described some things about a game. And then he said, oh, well, that's not what I would describe as a game. And then he described some things as a game. And turns out we had completely different views of what a game was. And then we went from that. We started talking about like, okay, well, why do you, why is this a quality of a game, but this isn't a quality of the game? And then from that, we started to build an, a better understanding of what the question was even about initially. Um, and th this is this is also something I like to do when I ask, when I talk to people about their belief systems. Well, for me, religion and spirituality is super fascinating. I'm not personally religious or spiritual, but that's not because but that it was is all but that journey has uh, gone from a journey of being religious and being spiritual to this point where I no longer believe because it just doesn't fit within the worldview that makes sense to me. But I have friends who it does fit in their worldview. And so when we talk, we'll have a dialogue. 
and I'll at, and I'll I'll want to ask questions about like what is a soul and who where does the soul come from just so I when I ask these questions and when people ask questions in general we should assume it is for understanding for me it is because I'm trying to get to the point where I can see where this concept fits within my worldview because I it's hard to truly transmit a full worldview just like it is hard to fully transmit a a perspective that is very different from my own that's a struggle of communication it's a struggle that humans have faced for a long time and that we will continue to face look at all of the the some of the biggest conflicts and tragedies of humanity are born from ultimately miscommunications, misunderstandings, which means that we weren't able to properly communicate our understanding. This is a this is a struggle that humans have faced since like times of antiquity and even probably even prior, but we know at least in the times of antiquity when because we've we've got like some written records of uh, stories of uh, miscommunications leading to tragedy. So why, how do we become better communicators is ultimately a question of why do humans even communicate in the first place? And I believe if you start to like, to broaden your view of it from sharing ideas to sharing an understanding to arriving at a mutual understanding, it will change your entire perspective on communicating just as it has changed mine and maybe from that communication will become more interesting because it's not just about exchanging facts about each other it's about sharing each other's worlds sharing each other's perspectives with each other and when you see share another perspective when you are gracious and when you're gratified with perspective it is such such a fulfilling feeling it is it is like a high like no other it is a new way of you seeing the world it can literally change how you see something in the world today how you experience the world i've learned a lot from the random people that i'll probably never meet again learned way i've learned ways of improving my sense of smell or ways of better communicating or understanding the plight of people or just or under or understanding about the behaviors of animals and birds or plants all this can be done through simply having the graciousness to ask questions in a genuine way seek understanding when you ask questions seek to be understood when you communicate and communication will turn from this task that needs to be done to this this joyful playground that you enjoy and you are excited to be in anyway thank you for listening thank you for watching it's this has been a fun one, but in on in the um, in the vein of communication, I think being concise is also important. So I'm going to we're going to end it here. So thank you again for watching. It's lovely to have any kind of audience at all. Like and subscribe if you if you care to. If not, that's fine. I'm going to do it regard. I'm going to put this out regardless. And as always. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I kind of forgot what my outro was. <laughs> As always, embrace your chaos with kindness. <laughs>